Welcome back to the Aussie Prepper channel and today I'm going to show you how to use the Wheeler Professional Scope Mounting Kit. And that's the kit here. I've used it before. As you can see there's already some wear on these parts here. And I do have a video about this kit and I'll link that down below for you in the description box. We're going to mount the scope to my HW97K air rifle. That is the rifle scope we will be fitting. It's a 3 to 9 by 40. It is a second hand scope and I actually got this as part of another deal that I did some time ago where I bought a 223 rifle and it came with this scope. Now what I've already done, I've already done the hard work and worked out roughly where I've got to put the mounting bases. Now this one here has got provisions for an arrestor pin and as you can see there there's holes there and i've determined that i need to line up this particular mound with the center arrestor pin provision right there so i'll get the arrestor pin started just so i can line it up with the hole correctly and there it is there i can feel the arrestor pin has located itself in the hole and now we'll, we won't tighten these up fully, but I will just put some tension on these to locate that ring base. Now that's only just nipped up and the arrest of pin is in there. I'll just back that off a bit now. And I'll just see that the arrestor pin has located itself, and as you can see there, it has. So we'll slide that right back and just nip these up. We will be talking these up properly to the proper torque settings later down the line. Now the front ring does not have an arrestor pin, so we'll just put that on there. We will put some slight tension on it, but I still want to be able to adjust it forward and back. This is where the different mounting positions come in to be able to adjust your eye relief of your rifle scope. So in this case, I have already done that work. So if you're doing this for the first time, you might need to experiment on where you need to mount this ring. And look, every rifle is slightly different, but the principles remain the same. Now, I have worked out that if my mount is in the middle here, my eye relief here is spot on perfect. I'm going to double check roughly that it is center. And look, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. Now that I'm happy with the position of the front mount, I'll just tighten that one up just so it stays where it is again it will be torqued up later to the correct torque settings okay we have now determined the final position of both of those rings and see how it looks nicely spaced out a lot of people will have rifle scopes and they'll be mounted like that like to me that just looks horrible i see it all the time now keep in mind that I have already set my eye relief, okay, I know what that is. Now I can take the rifle scope away. Now that we have determined the position of our bases, and it's sort of locked in, like I said they're not tight yet. Now the caps need to go back onto the right base, and they need to go the right way around. So that would be the wrong way, that would be the right way. And it is the way they came out of the box when you first bought these. I've lapped these rings already and I'm going to do that again for this rifle so I know which set matches which base and which way it goes. So you might have to mark these with a little marker if you don't want to get them mixed up. Okay, That will prevent your scope from getting damaged, like these not aligning properly, so if they're misaligned slightly it will mark the scope tube and damage your scope. So you don't want to do that. You want it to be as perfect as possible on the inside 
and the more perfect you get it, the more even pressure the rings will grab your scope with and the more accurate your rifle will be. Okay, you want everything to be as perfect as possible and if you take your time doing this it will be well worth the effort in the end and you will be rewarded with a very accurate rifle hopefully if this is done properly. I'm only getting these started so that we can install the aligning bars to make sure that the rings are aligned properly. Look, if they're not aligned, it's going to be a bit of a process or even maybe getting rid of the rings and buying better quality rings. Now these are pretty good quality, so they should align. These are aligning bars that come in your kit. Obviously now we need to tighten these up. And again, they don't have to be extra tight. And you just go around tightening opposites as you go. Got to try and keep this as even as possible. Now these do line up quite nicely and the camera angle might be deceiving. I'm not sure what the camera will show you, but they are quite lined up point to point. So we're good to go to the next step now. Now that we've determined the final position of these and we're happy everything's aligned, we will be taking out one of these, one at a time, applying some Loctite and then torquing them to the correct torque setting. So we'll start by taking this one out. Now these are 4mm fasteners, so we need about 40 inch pounds of torque setting for these. It says 38 to 40. There you go, that's set to 40 now. We have now applied a small amount of Loctite. And we'll be tightening it to 40 inch pounds. And that's it there, that's your 40. Now we'll take out the next one. This might seem like double handling everything, but look, this is the right way to do it. Again, small amount of Loctite on the thread. And we're still at 40 using our torque wrench. And that's it. I'd like to double check them and I will do the whole lot again once I've finished the job. So once they're all been Loctited and torqued, I will just go along and re -torque them all. Okay, that's it. So they're all four of these and now torqued up to 40. So now I'm going to go along and go one, two, three, four before the Loctite sets and that is where they stay. So, and again the idea is to be as consistent as possible. Make sure your bit is right inside there and let's go. One, two, Three, four, that's it. So these bases are now set where they're going to be. We're not going to touch these again. But there's still a fair bit of work left to be done to get this scope mounted up. Now that our bases are set, we can get rid of these aligning guides. Now that we're back here, keep in mind the bases are set, like I've already said. But we still have not finalised our arrestor pin. So what we'll do now 
is take these off and now our arrestor pin is in there so we'll take that out because we do want to lock tight that in as well we'll apply some lock tight to it and we will now install our arrestor pin with the lock tight and look there's no torque setting for this we'll just get it in there nice and snug that's it give that a bit of a clean up get rid of any excess Loctite and obviously make sure that your arrestor pin is not interfering with where the scope sits and this one is definitely below the surface now the next stage will be to lap our scope ring so we've got some 220 grit lapping compound there which is very messy stuff and we will put some inside the rings And just make sure that you clean all this mess up when you're done. There we go, the job's done, the lapping's pretty much finished now. So now we're going to take these caps off and clean all the mess up that we've made. Make sure you clean everything spotless. And do not mix up the caps or spin them around or do anything. They've got to go back exactly how they are there right now. So that cap's got to be exactly facing the same way in the same spot. And same with that one there. Now we have cleaned everything up. We're going to position our scope. You'll get it fairly close to where you want it to be. Fairly central there. Once you've roughly aligned that where you want it to be, we're not going to tighten it yet. You get your little fasteners Put a small amount of Loctite on every single one and get them in there finger tight. So let's do that now. Now we'll tighten all these up, put a little bit of tension on these. But we only want to tighten them enough so that the scope can still be adjusted where it is. Now I'm on this side to be the same as that side. That's how I like it. Okay, it looks very ugly if it's all over the place. It does take a little bit more time to get this spot on and to get it perfect. But guess what? It's going to be there for a long time. And, you know, no one thinks anything of spending three hours sitting there watching TV. 
but then people want their scope mounted on their rifle in five minutes and don't take the care to get it absolutely perfect. Now that's looking quite good. Nice and even spacing there. Now the time's come to make sure the crosshairs are straight up and down aligned with the rifle. Now there's two ways to do it. You can pick up your rifle and sight through the scope and just do it by eye and just adjust it like that. Or you can use the level kit, the level level that comes with the scope mounting kit. Now make sure that is perfectly flat and you sit that on there. And now we'll make sure this is right. Get your bubble lined up perfectly on the bottom here first. And then you can see that bubble is right over there. So we need to adjust that slightly. Quite a bit actually. Oh, there it goes. Again, take your time doing this. There's no rush. It's not a race. You don't have to be anywhere. Just get it right. You need to do it three times, five times, ten times. Keep doing it until it's absolutely perfect. Because you know what? One day, your life might just depend on this being absolutely perfect. There you go, that's all lined up now. Now, we're just going to take a tiny little bit of tension on these. Just like a quarter of a turn. And you go opposites. Quarter of a turn. Go across. Quarter of a turn. Go across. Quarter of a turn. There you go. Fair bit of difference in tension there. That one might need a little bit. There you go. I can just feel that tension coming on now. Yep. 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 Now after doing that, we'll check everything again. Doesn't cost anything. Checking is free. It is still good. So now we do the same thing here. A little bit of tension, opposite, opposite, and opposite. Now that should be tight enough to hold your scope in place. See, it's not going anywhere now. So we check our alignment one more time. And you'll be checking it each time you do it. That is still perfect. Now what we're doing now, we're going back to the torque wrench. Now these ones are going to get tightened to 15 inch pounds. No more than that. But we're going to do it in stages. So I'm going to start off on roughly 5. And we'll start on one. Go to the opposite one. Go to the opposite one. Go to the opposite one. This is all about being consistent. Now do the front one. And what are we going to do now? We will check our alignment. And we are still good. So now we're going to 10. And this time we can go the opposite way. 10. 
opposite diagonal, opposite across, opposite across. Diagonal. Okay, so we're now at 10 inch pounds and I'm going to check it again. I am relentless on checking this stuff. I'm happy with that, so now we're going to 15. And that's it for that. We're now at 15 inch pounds. Your scope is perfectly aligned. If you like, you can now go around and double check the torque settings on every single fastener that you've tightened up. And then just let that settle down. Wait for the Loctite to dry. Maybe leave it overnight. And your rifle is now ready to side in. One rifle scope mounted up to perfection. Now your aim when mounting rifle scopes is also to keep the scope as low as possible. Now there's not much of a gap on this particular rifle as you can see there. It's very very close. But there's still enough clearance there to not cause any problems. If you have a look at all my rifles that I own the scopes sit very, very close to the action. Very close. And again, that is part of me being very fussy and getting it absolutely perfect. I hate seeing rifle scopes that sit way, way high where there's like you know, a quarter of an inch or half an inch gap between the action and the bell of the scope. To me, that's just wasting potential of the rifle. Now the next job will be to sight in the rifle and get some target practice in. If you've got any questions about anything that I've done, leave your question down below. I'll try and answer your question for you. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do me a favour and give me a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos from Aussie Prepper. Thanks for watching and bye for now.